Hi students, I am Aves Ahmed Husseini, working as Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at Sharad Institute of Technology, College of Engineering, Adra. In previous videos, we discussed the so many things related with the fundamental concepts of the Applied Thermodynamics 1 and definitely it will help you while studying Applied Thermodynamics 1. So to, from today onwards, we will start unit number 2. The chapter name is Team Generator. Why that unit number 2 is? Why not 1? Because first you have to clear the basic concepts of that steam generation, their uh, thermal cycles, then you will get the idea about that combustion. The first unit is related with, the, with that combustion process. So before that you must have to know the concepts of the steam generator, steam power plant and the thermal cycle. Then it is very easy to grab that idea related with the combustion process. So let us start with the unit number 2 and uh, lecture number 1 and some uh, introductory part related with the steam generator. Students, steam generator is nothing but a simple boiler. So a steam boiler or a steam generator is a closed vessel which is made by some corrosion resistance material in which water is heated, it gets vaporized and finally that water get converted into steam at a high pressure and definitely it will higher than the atmospheric pressure. So there are the lot of the applications of the boiler where we can use and n number of the things are required for satisfactory operation of the boiler like the mountings as well as accessories. Without that mountings and accessories it is very difficult to run the boiler. So, so this is one simple look or glimpse of the boiler. It consists of the n number of the parts like shell, grate, ash pit, smoke box, short pipe, fusible plug, safety valves, water level indicators, blow off wall, steam stop wall, manhole, chimney and pressure gauge. In upcoming video, we will discuss that all those mountings as well as accessories. So this is all about the boiler. So what is exactly the boiler is? A steam boiler or a steam generator is a closed vessel in which water is heated, it gets vaporized and finally it gets converted into high pressurized steam and the same steam is utilized for the variety of the applications. So what are the different applications of the boiler? The first is operating steam engines, operating steam turbines, operating reciprocating pumps, some industrial process work in chemical engineering for producing hot water required to be supplied to room in very cold areas in thermal power station. Similarly, there is a wide variety of the applications where we need the steam like in case of the sugar mills, textile mills, dairy application, industry applications, processing industries, food processing industries, chemical industries, etc. So let us start with the classification of the boiler. The boiler is mainly classified on the basis of content of the fluid. So there are two types. The first is fire tube boiler and second one is water tube boiler. What is fire tube boiler? In case of the fire tube boiler, the fire is continuously passing through the tubes and it gets surrounded by the water and exactly reverse happen in case of the water tube boiler. In case of the water tube boiler, the water is continuously flowing or passing from the tube and it gets surrounded by the fire. So it is called as a water tube boiler. On the basis of application, boiler is classified, utility boilers, industrial boilers, marine boilers, locomotive boilers. Also on the basis of the axis of the tube arrangement, horizontal boilers, vertical boilers. Similarly, the most important thing is on the basis of the fuels, the boiler is classified as coal fired boilers gas fired boilers, wood fired boilers, diesel fired boilers. 
Students, keep in mind that in sugar factory in cogeneration power plant, we prefer bagasse as a fuel because it is very easily available with us. So the next is based on the pressure, high pressure boiler, medium pressure boiler, low pressure boiler. In case of the high pressure boiler, pressure is more than 80 bar. In medium pressure boiler, the pressure range is in between 30 to 80 bar. And in case of the low pressure boiler, the pressure range is below 30 bar. Keep in mind that the water tube boiler is supposed to be high pressure boiler. Last classification is based on the circulation of the water. It may be natural circulation and sometimes the forced circulation boilers. Students, the most important point of the discussion is essentials requirements of the good boiler because boiler is a main device or it is a hard part of the steam power plant so without steam we never produce the electricity so it must have some good requirement and some essential requirements some are important are listed here it should be capable of quick start so it must be quick start it should meet a large load of fluctuations Occupy less floor space. It is most important thing as far as that floor area is to be considered. It should afford easy maintenance and inspection. Should essentially process the capacity of the producing maximum steam with minimum fuel consumption. Means it produce more amount of the power with less fuel consumption. Also it is light and simple in construction. As far as that maintenance point of view, various joints should be accessible for the inspection and should be away from the direct flame impact. So this is the most important point as far as safety point is to be considered. The tube should be sufficiently strong to resist wear and corrosion. So material selection is very important in this case. Mud and other deposits should not collect on heated plates. And the last one is the velocity of the water and that of flue gas should be minimum. So these are the, some essential requirement of the good boilers. So students, the next part is a water tube boiler and fire tube boiler and its differentiation. So in case of that steam power plant, the boiler is the main and major important device through which we can produce a steam by converting water into high pressurized saturated steam and that same steam is given to the steam turbine when the steam high pressurized steam is strike on the surface of the blades of the steam turbine it gets start rotating and finally mechanical energy is produced in terms of the shaft rotation okay and further that shaft is connected to the generator in order to produce an electricity as far as the law of faraday is to be considered so higher efficiency if you want the higher performance and output of the steam power plant then the most important requirement of the steam is it should be dry it should be having a high pressure and good kind of the dryness fraction or approximately it should be it must be uh, dry saturated, no any kind of the moisture content present or remains in it. And one more important thing is tentative efficiency of that steam power plant, it is in between 35 to 40 percent. So there is a huge scope in order to improve the performance of the steam power plant in every aspects. So there are basically two types of the boilers. The first one is that water tube and second one is fire tube. The basic difference of the water tube and fire tube boiler is in case of the water tube boiler, the water is continuously passing through the tubes and it gets surrounded by the fire. But in case of the fire tube boiler, the fire is continuously flowing through the tube and it gets surrounded by the fire water. So this is the main difference between water tube and fire tube boiler. 
students keep in mind that in case of the large capacity power plant or in case of the ntpc power plant ntpc is nothing but national thermal power corporation it is a government body the so most of case the water tube boilers are used in order to produce large amount of the electricity or power so it generate in case of the water tube boiler it generate steam at a high pressure and it is up to 165 bar so more than 100 bar power plant is in category of the large capacity uh, electricity generation so definitely so water tube boiler are generally used in case of the large capacity power plant but in case of the fire tube boiler it can generate steam up to 24 or to 29 bar approximately the rate of the generation of the steam is very high and it is up to 450 tons per hour similarly in case of the fire tube boiler the rate of the generation of the steam is low as compared with the water tube and it is up to 9 to 11 tons per hour the overall efficiency of the boiler students here i specially mention it is a efficiency of the boiler not a efficiency of the steam power plant the tentative efficiency of the steam power plant is in between that 35 to 40 percent so here i consider just efficiency of the boiler if it is water tube then its overall efficiency is approximately 90 percent but in case of the fire tube boiler it is less as compared with the water tube and it is in between that 70 to 75 percent so next important is its operating cost is high and its approach uh, operating cost is little bit less the bursting chances of the water tube boiler is more why what is the reason behind it students yeah the reason is that particular boiler is having the high pressure so we must have to follow the protocols of the IBR so that IBR is a just govern, government agency it provides the rules and regulation for the safety so the bursting chances of the water tube boiler is more and the bursting chances of the fire tube boiler is less because fire tube boiler are mostly used for the uh, low capacity thermal power plant and low capacity applications the next is it is used for the large capacity power plant and it is not suitable for the large capacity large uh, capacity power plant there are a lot of the examples of the water tube boilers like Babcock and Wilcox it is the most important famous boiler in case of the water tube in most of the thermal power plant uh, the Babcock and Wilcox boilers are generally used Stirling boiler is there Lamont boiler is there Benson boiler is there Loefer boiler Yarrow boiler these are come under water tube boiler and there are a number of the boilers are also related with that fire tube the first is simple vertical boiler second is Cochron boiler next is Lancashire boiler Cornish boiler Scotch boiler locomotive boiler Vulcan boiler so these are some important boilers are come under that fire tube boiler so students this is the main uh, difference between fire tube and water tube boiler so in this particular video we discussed the fundamentals about the boiler concept our next video will be definitely on their particular types and in that video we will discuss important boilers in details along with their construction and working thank you